Well, it's been a while since we've been in the garage with my 2005 E320 CDI, and it's been pretty frustrating for me to say the least. My goal with this car was to create a blueprint for everybody watching on how to extract more power from this platform without sacrificing anything at all. And since basically no one in the United States modifies these, it's been very difficult to get good information and parts. I guess that's what happens when you modify a super rare car that most don't even know exists. If you follow these videos, I've already installed a larger hybrid turbo, a larger front mount intercooler, and a stage one tune, and so far, so good, but I'm leaving a ton on the table. With a diesel engine, you must add more fuel to be able to take advantage of most any modifications, and that's where the holdup's been. I haven't been able to find any companies in the United States until now that can tell me 100% if they can modify these injectors. Lots of maybes or we'll try, which just isn't good enough considering how expensive new injectors are and how much damage a faulty injector can cause on a diesel. So in today's video, we have a ton of awesome diesel goodness for all of you guys. I'm going to show you a part that took three months to get from Europe that's off of a twin turbo V8 diesel and that should definitely give us some more fuel. We're going to be testing my 200,000 mile fuel injectors to see if they're any good before we ship them out to a company that took me forever to find that can hone them out for about double the amount of fuel that they flow right now. But regardless, we're removing these injectors in this video and let's just hope I don't have the same trouble I had the last time I tried to take out a set of CDI fuel injectors. Oh, and I'm also going to show you the damage that was done to this car from hitting an armadillo at 80 miles an hour. Should be a fun one. Okay, so at this point you might be asking, Alex, what in the world is this conglomeration right here? I mean, we have plastic tubes zip tied to a welding rod and held with mechanics wire to the hood, and I'm even using an emptied out organic Whole Foods milk jug. This is all very, very strange, but I'm gonna explain this to you here shortly because this is something that all of you guys can make at home for just a couple bucks, and it can really help you diagnose issues uh, with practically any diesel engine. Uh, but I just learned how to make this whole homemade tool, if you want to call it that. And I love learning new stuff, even if it's outside of cars. And recently, I have been stepping up my education game by learning off of a cool website that I know you guys are going to love called Skillshare.com. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes covering dozens of entrepreneurial skills. Whether you want to fuel your creativity, curiosity, or even your career, Skillshare is the perfect place to keep you learning and thriving. Since I I'm a pretty busy guy. I like to take courses on productivity like this one called the Productivity Masterclass by Thomas Frank. The class shows you how to utilize the best apps on your phone and programs for your computer to stay super organized and other smart strategies to keep you working efficiently. So if you're feeling overwhelmed with life and work, I highly recommend taking this class. And just like my homemade tool that's made mostly of vinyl plastic tubing from the hardware store, Skillshare is totally affordable with annual memberships starting at only $10 a month and premium membership gets you unlimited access to take as many classes as you'd like. There are over 7 million people learning on Skillshare today and you can be one of them by hitting the link in the video description box down below. This will get you two full months of premium access totally free. Big thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now let's go fire up my diesel and see if it blows off any of these vinyl tubes. Fire in the hole. All right, guys, here we go. We're watching the fuel level rising in the tubes, and we want them to basically be even. If one of them is leaking back more than the other, the level is going to be much higher. Uh, so let's see what we have going on here. You got to make sure these things aren't leaking either. I have a few that are a little wet, and we'll just let this run uh, for roughly, I don't know, 30, 40 seconds, something like that. As long as they are all about the same, then we know we are good. Now I did disconnect the return line that normally goes on top of each one of these injectors and I just stuck it in this milk jug because for some reason there is pressure behind that return line so you will spray diesel fuel all over the place. Uh, but all right, let's, uh, let's go ahead and shut this thing down. All right, guys, so I'd say we are pretty much even here. Check these two out right here. 
Uh, don't pay attention to this one, guys. It is just leaking way too bad, so it might be a good idea uh, to get a better uh, clamp down here. But basically, we're looking um, for a massive difference. There are specifications on how much these should leak back at idle during a certain amount of time, uh, but I don't know what those specs are, and to be honest with you, we can use common sense here uh, and determine whether or not one of them is leaking much more than the other. So this is a very basic test, and as long as you clamp your hose, this thing is leaking all the way down, uh, you should get pretty accurate results. Uh, now, what can happen if you have a leaking fuel injector? Well, if it's leaking back too much, that means you're not getting enough fuel in the cylinder, so that can be a low power situation. Eventually, if it's leaking bad enough, this could develop into a misfire. If a bunch of them are leaking, it could be a no-start situation. Uh, so this is something you can easily test at home on really any common rail diesel that has uh, the return on the top of the injector. So you can do this test to many, many diesels out there. In this case, I don't think we have much of an issue. Uh, so I think these injectors are good to go to be removed and sent out to a company called Rochester Diesel. Uh, it took me forever to find a company that would hone these out. So basically they can uh, bore these injectors out so that they flow a lot more fuel, about double the amount of fuel that they flow now, which is gonna complement uh, the larger hybrid turbo uh, and the intercooler right down there. Uh, so once we get more fuel going, this thing is going to really wake up. So what I'm gonna do now is remove this whole testing kit, put our return line back on, uh, and then I'm gonna heat this engine up a lot because if you guys saw the video on the silver CDI of me removing injectors, now granted that one had a ton of black death on the injectors, uh, but you wanna get the engine hot so you don't run the risk of having one of these guys stick inside of the cylinder. Uh, so let me go do that and we're actually gonna pull this thing out side to remove the fuel injectors because I don't want a dead car in my garage for what could be a couple weeks uh, because we got other projects to do. Okay, all the lines are disconnected, all the connectors, the return rail is off, and this is how confident I am that these injectors are going to come out. I didn't even bring the slide hammer out, so here we go on the first one. All right, that's coming out nice. You always want to remove the bolts by hand first. Be very gentle, guys. You don't want to break anything. That's wiggling a little. It's a good sign. <laughs> oh, come on, baby. Comment down below if you guys watched the video uh, with the silver diesel where I literally spend, I think that was a couple days actually that I spent getting those injectors out. It was horrible. Black death is nothing to mess around with, guys. If your injectors are in good shape, if there's no carbon buildup around them, go ahead and pop them out and replace the seals. And that way your injector will come out just like that. One down. I feel like I'm being a little bit too cocky here. I should have some respect for these injectors. All right, injector number two. Nice, I'm just gonna go ahead and loosen up all of these bolts right now. Sounds like they're breaking, but they're not. Nice. All right, we're home free. As far as bolts not breaking, so that's always nice. Now I wonder if these have been done. Like these look really nice and clean. There's a good possibility they were done. Previous owner really maintained this car. Uh, the guy before me was a 40-year like, diesel mechanic. But he did tell me like pretty much everything he did to this thing. He didn't mention injectors. He probably would have if he did them. All right, guys, so we have all the bolts and all the hold downs out. Now we're just going to go ahead and start ripping and tearing and hope these all come out. And oh, yeah, this is already coming out. Guys, do you remember the slide hammer video? That was absolutely horrible. Came right out. This one's spinning. If they spin, you know you're in pretty good shape. You can be confident that they're gonna come out if they spin. All right, there's that. This one's, oh yeah, this one's really easy. Okay, and I marked all these injectors, guys, uh, so they go back in the right cylinder. 
Not sure how big of a deal it makes, but it's one of those like, why not? It takes two seconds type of thing to do. And that's it, oh my gosh, seriously, okay. If you guys saw the video with the slide hammer on the silver CDI, I think those took me two days to do because there was a ton of black death carbon buildup around the injector. And this is stuff that can happen on any diesel. So guys, I can't stress this enough. If you don't have any black death, take your injectors out just like I did. You guys saw pretty much all of it live. That's all it takes and replace the little seal that goes here. The seals and the bolt kit for this are roughly $20 in parts, that's it. And any one of you guys can do this at home. I'll leave all the parts link, the part numbers, everything you guys need to do this job on the CDI in the video description box down below. Again, do it, do it, do it before the black death comes for you. All right, so if you're gonna have your fuel injectors out for really any amount of time, especially if the car is gonna be outside, you definitely want to cover up, plug up the holes uh, where the injectors go and also cover up these lines. You don't want anything getting in the engine or in the fuel system. So I'll be putting a bunch of plastic, possibly some rags jammed in there uh, because the car will be sitting outside here for probably a couple weeks or however long it takes to get these injectors done. Now the test that you guys saw in this video is not the end all be all to determine whether or not your injector can be honed out for more fuel. Uh, so the guys at Rochester Diesel will be flow testing these fuel injectors to let me know their internal condition and whether or not they can use these. So I'm really crossing my fingers that they can because a new set of injectors are very, very expensive and I don't wanna have to buy those. <laughs> uh, so this is the part that I've been waiting for for roughly three months from Europe. Uh, subscriber, uh, my diesel buddy Drew turned me on to this pump right here. A lot of you guys had commented about this as well, but he hooked it up and found a few of these in Europe uh, and he got me one. So this is out of uh, the V8 twin turbo diesel. I think that's put in the E-Class and maybe some other models out in Europe and some other places in the world. It's the E400, E420 guys correct me in the comment section, but basically this pump right here produces uh, about 30% more fuel than our original high pressure pump right here. And what's awesome is supposedly this is pretty much a direct bolt on. There are a couple little things I'll have to do, uh, but as soon as I figure out everything I have to do to retrofit this pump onto this engine, I'll make a video and I may rebuild this while it's out. But these things are very sturdy. They practically last forever. So if you find a used one, uh, you can be pretty confident that it's gonna work just fine. Uh, so something else I wanted to show you guys this actually happened a couple months ago but didn't affect me until now was I hit an armadillo traveling at about 80 miles an hour I drove this car uh, from Florida uh, all the way back to Chicago and on the cruise back I hit something that felt like a rock but it was actually an armadillo uh, and it did this damage to the bumper here and it actually ended up pushing my intercooler into my AC condenser, but I didn't realize this at all, and it didn't leak out. The Freon refrigerant didn't leak out for a couple of months, so it might be hard to tell, but basically the intercooler smashed into the uh, condenser, and you can see the amount of space that I had on that side was quite a bit. I can fit you know, my fingers in here, so basically it bent the bracket here. I know some of you guys said this was a weak bracket. It hasn't broken, and had I not hit that thing, probably would have been okay, but I'll have to replace the AC condenser and then I'll probably get a beefier bracket in here as well. Uh, and then I need a new bumper, which I was gonna do anyway. So this is an awesome time to do the E63 bumper and I'm so glad that I hadn't done it before. Otherwise that would have been destroyed as well. So this thing is prime for the new bumper. We're hopefully gonna have our injectors in here bigger high pressure pump. Uh, and then I did get in contact with a company that thinks that they can tune this thing for these custom injectors. And this has been another big hiccup with this car is finding someone that can do a custom tune. Basically, I send them what I have done to the car, the turbo, the intercooler, and now the massive fuel injectors, hopefully, uh, and they can tune for that. So anyway, I'll keep you guys posted on all of that stuff. And if you want quicker updates on really anything on my channel, definitely follow me on Instagram at Legit Streetcars. All right, so at this point, I'm going to protect our engine and then I gotta take off for work. I got the C63 and my Corvette are currently at the body shop right now. C63 video is coming out soon. So I have these two choices. Well, actually I have the TA on the rack, but I don't wanna lower it. What would you guys take? Comment down below, 211 or E39? I think for the sake of this video, I'm taking this guy. That'll do it for today's video. I hope you guys really enjoyed this one. And if you did, don't forget, hit the like button, share this video, subscribe if you're new, and most importantly, 
swap out your injector seals before it's too late. Have an awesome day, guys. I'll catch you all in the next video.